Välkomna, a very warm welcome to this day where we'll have architect talks um, together in this lovely, lovely villa. And the subject is singly family houses. And uh, I think this setting is absolutely wonderful because this was once a private villa. It's now the embassy of the Hungarian uh, country. And uh, it used to be a private villa, so the setting is wonderful. And I will leave the word to our host today. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Lotta. So welcome all of you in the building of the Hungarian Embassy. I'm Veronika Kosás, the Hungarian Cultural Attaché, and we are really pleased to host uh, today's Visegrad Four event uh, in our building, which was organized uh, by the Polish Cultural Institute in cooperation with the Czech Center and uh, the Slovak Embassy here in Stockholm. My name is Paweł Ruszkiewicz. I'm director of the Polish Institute in Stockholm, and uh, it's, it's a great honor, really, to be here all together, all V4 countries together, and presenting uh, in Sweden, presenting the achievement of, of uh, V4 architects. And thank you, Design Sweden, for joining us uh, and being with us here together. My name is Silvia Hammarberg. I'm uh, working at the Slovak Embassy as the culture officer, and we're really happy to be part of this uh, project uh, to show a Central European architecture here in Sweden. Hi, I'm Susanna, and I work as a director of the Czech Center Stockholm. What I really like on this project is that it combines three aspects, urbanization, creativity, and sustainable development. How's it good? Hello, everyone. I'm Norbert Vilani, and it is a great honor to be here. And I'm very pleased to the opportunity to introduce our small studio. My wife, Rosie and myself are the two owners of the small architecture company. Six architects of us work here, and we have a wide range of subcontractors. Most of our design projects are located in Budapest, its suburb and around the Lake Balaton, but we've been working all over in Hungary. In our practice, we didn't focus on a particular type of building, but we are involved in all kinds of projects. In this short presentation, I would like to show you our dearest works or our projects, which are special to us in a certain way. I would like to start with a very exciting experiment from the 2015. This is our own summer house close to the Lake Balaton. Actually, this is a one-to-one -one model where we studied the dimensions and the scale of the building. We had a chance to gain experience in the construction method and use of materials. We have boldly experimented since we didn't spend someone else's money and time, but ours. We made many things by our own hands and that gave us a self-confidence. The next building is located in a different surroundings, in the center of a small village, north from the Lake Balaton. Even the function is different. This is not a summer house, but a second home for a family. Still, we were able to use the experiences from our small project. Integration into the built environment and the seemingly generous yet economical use of space were primary here. Our first new public building was designed in 2012, and this is very close to us. As you can see, it sits in a grove situated in the middle of a city called Székesfehérvár. The main concept was to mimic this situation. You could have seen through between the structural elements and the solid parts of the building, but the roof is closed in the height of leaves. My wife, Rosie, she's a conservation architect too. Right below the castle of Vesprim, there was a historical site. Renewing this building posed a serious professional challenge. Designing preservation and conservation of history buildings is one of our main profiles since then. This was a unique project, for example. It stands in an exhibition space, which is located in an interior of a temple. This bridge gives visitors a new perspective of the exhibition space. 
The castle of Nagyszen is a popular place of pilgrimage in Hungary. The small chapel was completely demolished after the Second World War. Reconstruction of the spatial structure of the chapel posed a serious professional challenge and interior design was a good fun. Designing the refurbishment of one of the biggest Baroque Catholic church in Budapest was started in 2017. The facade renovation has finished in the first phase. We've been choosing the constructor of the interior recently. We had to make many decisions based on historical survey and research, and we had many, many structural issues to solve. Last but not least, a couple of pictures about our home in Budapest. This building is participated on the V4 exhibition. This is not a coincidence if you see similarities between the first shown summer house and this building. The experiences we got there were very useful during the design period, which was a quick process since we knew our clients quite well. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye. Hello, everyone. I'm Yenik. Um, in the middle is uh, my wife, uh, Barbara. And on the left is our colleague Yenik, and we call ourselves ORA, which means Original Regional Architecture. We are based in Znojmo, which is a small city uh, on South Moravian borders, close uh, Brno and close uh, Vienna. Uh, this is our inspiration. Uh, I call it Accidental Architecture. Uh, this house uh, has something in common, and the thing is that uh, there was no architect present uh, during their evolution. It's uh, organic architecture which grow during the uh, during the years, and um, I like the to, to, to see the layers uh, layering uh, one above each other. Uh, this is uh, one of our first commissions. Uh, it's called Steinhaus. It's a uh, guest house. Uh, it's a refurbishment of a really old house in the center of Mikulov. And uh, for me, it's special because we had the opportunity to design everything we wanted. Like we uh, could design our own windows, uh, handles, uh, lighting, and uh, for me, it's special. It's it's not common that uh, uh, investor let you do this um, because this event is about uh, family houses. This is our design of uh, um, case study house, South Moravian house. It's a it's a new build house, and uh, we try to show how is possible to uh, uh, build in. Um, <clears throat> South Moravian countryside, like to to try to uh, alternate some kind of archetype of the countryside house. Uh, this is a um, house inside a ruin, and uh, we decided here to go inside, not outside, because uh, our task was to refurbish this house and investors and. Also, we really uh, like the uh, look of the uh, romantic ruin, uh, which uh, which we wanted to keep. So we built in new house. Uh, we recycled uh, wooden beams. We recycled boards. We recycled the walls and the roof, and just uh, built new insulated house, which meets uh, contemporary needs uh, but uh, still we we kept this uh, uh, romantic ruin look uh, this is our ongoing project it's a it's a uh, sorry uh, it's a house extension uh, in the center of Znojmo it was quite hard to get it approved because uh, the center of Znojmo the historical city it's uh, under the uh, strong heritage protection and uh, uh, it's not easy to build something new here, uh, but we did it. It took a long time 
and I really like it because this house was originally built for storing things. It wasn't uh, uh, built for a, for a, a living for for a people. Uh, and I really like this idea to inhabit uh, utilitary um, buildings, originally utilitary buildings. And this is a last project I will show you today. It's also an ongoing project. We uh, didn't uh, design a fence yet, but we are working on it. Working on it. Uh, and it's a house on, a, on the most prominent place in Znoimo uh, with the best views. Uh, this is a view from a distance. Uh, behind uh, you can see the Roman Rotunda on St. Catherine, the most precious uh, building in the whole city. And this house was originally a uh, bungalow from 70s, like really normal, not 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 precious house, but we think uh, it's sustainable to keep as much constructions as possible. So we uh, didn't decide to destroy it, uh, but we decided to rebuild it. And uh, we add one floor and we add this uh, rounded windows, uh, which uh, uh, brings uh, great views uh, to the uh, surrounding uh, landscape. So thank you for your attention and hope to see you in Znoimo one day. Bye. Hello, my name is Pavel Paniak. I am from architectural studio BKPS from Bratislava. Uh, allow, me, allow me to begin with a short chronology. I will speak about extension of a former Brickmaster's house in the village of Čartice, which is 100 kilometers to the north of from Bratislava. The marked place is a former village uh, brickyard, an area which consisted of uh, clay mine of Brickmaster's houses and the brick kiln here. Um, the production run over 200 years and uh, ceased in shortly after the World War II and subsequently an orchard was planted on this site. I acquired it 27 years ago and I uh, began gradually to reconstruct it to my weekend stay place. Uh, as first, I reconstructed the former Brickmaster's house. It is a type of a portico rural house uh, which vanished after the war. Uh, then the former kiln was on. I found it actually in a ruinous state. It was a vault covered with earth layer. Uh, here you can see the faces of the reconstruction. It was actually a bushy hill with a vault inside it. Uh, it, it serves as my weekend uh, studio and here is the interior of the, of the studio. Then my latest undertaking is actually the addition to the former Brickmaster's uh, house. It's actually an added living room for the needs of the of the uh, growing family for uh, our weekend stays. Um, in the floor plan as well as in the cross section, it's actually a prolonged silhouette of the existing uh, old house. It is small in size, but this concept of open space lends it is a certain, certain uh, generosity. The roof truss is of rafter, steel rafter construction with infill made of old bricks. Uh, almost all of them uh, are the products, former products of this brickyard. Uh, this is the view towards the Empora. This is the view from the Empora uh, towards, towards the gable. The side wall, side wall viewing the, the garden, all the surfaces, completely all the surfaces are without the further treatment. 
opposite side wall with a bookshelf. The glazed portico serves as a clima buffer zone between outside and inside. Gla the glazed ceiling about the portico brings light to the surface of the brick infill. The gable side, the back side of the house. This detail shows uh, how it is layered, layered and uh, this kind of arrangement improves substantially the accumulation uh, characteristics of the of the annex. Mm, it could be said that uh, this approach uh, could be considered as a certain homage to the vanished craft of hand brick making. Thank you very much for your attention. Our team, which designed the house in the woods, so chosen this year for V4 Family Houses exhibition, consists of two architectural studios, Marlena Wolnik Architects and Jojko Nawrocki Architects. We are based in Katowice, South Poland, and still considered to be a young architect. We share working space, and besides leading our own projects, we sometimes collaborate, like for the design of this house on V4 exhibition. This building is located on a beautiful plot, close to the forest and local brook but with one important disadvantage. The site is a wetlands. That's why the main idea was to create a sort of an elevated island that will protect the house. The plan of house also follows the perimeter of this island, what we can see on the side facets. The interiors here are dominated by wood and has been designed with some nice innovations on the level of detailing and technical equipment like lighting, mechanical venti ventilation, etc. But our story with V4 competition and exhibition has already started almost 10 years ago, when in 2011, our design of houses in Rybnik has been also selected. We designed a sequence of three houses, which form and layout were determined by a certain context data, like sun orientation, access, different views. Special relations between buildings help us to define more private and public spaces in between the houses. Our next V4 exhibition was in 2017, when we presented another house. This building referred to traditional Polish houses with eaves. But in our case, we carefully defined the length and the eaves and its inclination in order to provide required sheltered terrace and two parking places. So during winter, the cars are not covered by snow and we have enough direct sunlight inside. And during the summertime, the living space and terrace are naturally protected against overheating. In 2018, it was our first edition of V4 exhibition, where we presented our house in Beskidi Mountains, a region located one hour car drive from our place in Katowice. The design of this house was inspired by the idea of a critical regionalism, and it was our response to the local geographical situation, but with contemporary language of architecture. The special plan is not typical and has been designed to provide a certain views towards surrounding mountains and greenery. The house is made of timber structure and also finished inside and outside with wood, like in old houses. However, the wood is used here in a very modern way. Another interesting design is a residence in Katowice, a wide reconstruction of an existing structure. The house consists of two main volumes a white one, which is a living zone, and a wooden one, which is mainly a technical and service zone. The separation between these two zones is marked with a symbolic black wall. Besides V4 competition and exhibitions, our projects are also participating in other events, like in the selection to the current Wies van der Rohe Award. The nominated local activity center in Rybnik which already received a few important prizes in Poland, is a project that aims to create a space of integration for the local community. It is an example of modest architecture that is blending in the surroundings, created with a very limited budget. The simple design is about creating a multifunctional in-between spaces rather than a significant form. Welcome to Stockholm. I'm Thomas Sandell, I'm an architect and designer who lives in Stockholm. Hi, my name is Sanna Hederus and I'm an architect working in Stockholm, Sweden. 
I run an office called Code Architecture, which work with housing, urban planning, cultural pro projects and so on. And it's very nice to be here. So a very warm welcome to this uh, architecture talk. And uh, we are currently in the villa of the Hungarian embassy. And as the topic is single family houses, this has a very interesting background because this was also built as a single family villa. And it was built in the 1920s for a private home. And uh, the Hungarian embassy has been here since 1971. And I wish we could take you on a tour because it is a really nice villa. And it has a lot to say about the time that it was built in. And we're also now in the diplomacy um, area of Stockholm. So we're in the city center. And we also have a sea view behind us. Uh, so, but very welcome. And I have two guests with me. I have Sanna Idrius and I have Thomas Sandell. And you are two Swedish architects. And uh, you will be in dialogue with uh, Norbert Villani from, uh, from Hungary, together with Rosalie Marton. And from Slovakia, we have Pavel Panak. Sorry for my uh, ex well for my pronunciation. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, from the Czech Republic, we have Jan Ora, and then we have Bartek Navroki. Hello um, once again. Hi, how are you? <laughs> so, let's start. Um, just a quick question to our Swedish architects: If you want to say something about the villa that we're currently in. How, how's the impression of coming to a house like this? It's a little bit like you go back in time uh, because it's been all preserved. So when you go through uh, very big gates and so it's like you come into a place that is hidden from us otherwise. So it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here to see it from inside. And this is a very special part of Stockholm as well. And uh, directing the same question to you, you were in a bit of a rush when you came, but um, uh, the villa was um, constructed in 1924. But what kind of impression does it give to you? Yeah, well, I, I was very concentrated trying to find parking spot outside because I was a little late, but uh, I didn't have time that much to see the, the house itself. But as what surprised me is a little bit is that this is not a really typical 20s interior. It's something else. So the inside doesn't really reflect the outside. Uh, we have some archive pictures. We can send them to you later. But uh, it actually looked like this a lot with this kind of new uh, Rococo. And um, yeah, so. But anyway. Uh, this project, uh, and we would like to say thank you so much for the presentation by Andres Boros from the Association of the Hungarian Architects for introducing us to this V4 project where you all participated. And it's been a project that has been running since uh, 2008. And uh, there are quite a number of architects a part of it, but you are the one invited to this uh, conversation here today. And uh, there is an exhibition, and it's called Virtu uh, Art Steps uh, Forum, where you can also view this exhibition. It's a virtual exhibition due to the pandemic, of course. And uh, the family houses, the single family houses, is a part of Isgra Group since 2008. And uh, of course, we're a bit curious about your presentations, and uh, we will hear your presentations, and then we will continue the talk. But Welcome, all of you, once more. Thanks. So the first question I would like to direct to, uh, to you in uh, Central Europe now is, excuse me for not having my papers in order. I will start with uh, Pavel. Yeah. Uh, this exhibition is... Um, of course, a big part of a bigger project, but I think you're all from different countries. What elements of traditional architecture of detached houses in each region are useful when you work in a contemporary design of family housing? Is there something special you can bring 
from your own region, or is it impossible when you do something modern? It, it always is when you have enough will to, to work with the legacy of the existing or vernacular, vernacular architecture there. Um, so is the case also in, in Slovakia, for example, um, there are in the family houses, uh, there are more examples uh, of a reinterpretation of a typical uh, pitched saddle roof uh, houses uh, in, with, a, with a prolonged uh, floor plan. It's very common and we see it in all the countries uh, taking part in the uh, in the in this exhibition, there are always examples. Is working with this, uh, I would say, principal figure of of architecture. But they are, of course, uh, the the variety of, of possibilities. How to abstract? How to work with this with this shape? Uh, it's very rich. So uh, it's actually there is always something new what can be found in this very classical known known type of housing. Mm. Yeah. And the same uh, question to you then, Bartek, what would you say? Are there any typical Polish elements that you can bring in? I would say that it's uh, more original uh, mm. to, to take into account entire uh, country as a uh, sort of big country, so it's more difficult. But in terms of region, we are based on South Poland. We can already distinguish some uh, features that are more common to our landscape, to our approach, to our industrial heritage. So we always uh, want to uh, introduce such elements in our architecture and especially in previous uh, uh, events of V4 exhibition because it's our fourth time when we are uh, invited here for the exhibition. We already tried to, to, to play with it and incorporate it in, the, in our houses so you can uh, see on our presentation. Uh, and you are participating with the uh, with villa in the woods, <laughs> the house yes, in the woods. Yes, this, yes. This, this and, time and can you give uh, us an example of, of how, you, how you were thinking with the typical elements? This was more... Uh, related to the very close context because the house is designed on a special area is the wetlands and the the forest so we are more uh, let's say consecrated on the very uh, close vicinity of a, of a plot but in terms of uh, in terms of a bigger context it's it's more let's say in a salesian in a way how we approach the design is rather uh, an engineering work and trying to answer uh, a simple questions related to especially the context and the needs of a client rather than the the design of the iconic forms on this kind of approach mm, thank you and what what about you uh, norbert uh, you are also living in uh, the villa that is participating. Are there any classical things that you brought into the architecture because you are both a commissioner and a builder and the architect at the once? Well, uh, it's Every, every design project is, is, is different and every design project uh, has its own perspective. So it's always have to think where to build and when to build. And, and it's also important who the client is or who the clients are. So um, I, I, I wouldn't say in, in our house that, that we used uh, or we... we um, sorry, I think I, I lost. <laughs> I get lost. If there is something typical from from your region or from from your country that you well, in, in our in our house, mm. it's it's. I, I wouldn't say that you can find anything. No, but okay. the, but the scale of the building mm. is 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 typical mm. in that place mm. because it used to be. Um, um, uh, a kind of weekend house area. Okay. There were very tiny and long gardens with, mm. with tiny houses. So that's why our building is, is divided into two main 
form. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, so we, we. You don't stand out in the neighborhood with an extra big house. <laughs> Yeah, okay. But uh, we talked about that a bit earlier, how it is to live in your own house and uh, when you're two architects uh, going on the same commission, which is kind of interesting. Is it difficult? I, I wouldn't say so. <laughs> yeah, it's not. You, you are still friends. <laughs> We're happy about that. <laughs> Okay, uh, I will move on to Jan. Uh, you are not a part of the project, but uh, what is your opinion about uh, how much do you bring in of your cultural heritage in, in doing things? Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, we mostly work on uh, reconstructions, so uh, we, we are used to work what we find, uh, but we also did some new houses uh, uh, and uh, as Norbert said uh, for me it's important uh, the context and the scale of the context so even uh, we used for example uh, sloped roof or something it's not so important for me as the as the, the position uh, to the street for example uh, the the scale of the volume of the house and how does it work in uh, in the city or in the village because you know uh, we have a problem that uh, uh, we have uh, huge satellite areas we call it satellites uh, around the cities which has no urbanism which doesn't respect anything but also uh, not very much architects work there you know it's, mm. it's very wild uh, urban development so mm. uh, we try to not build there but uh, mm. if we can choose Mm. We, we hope to see your uh, examples uh, next year when this uh, competition and exhibition is on. Uh, I would like to direct the same question to Thomas because uh, I am Swedish and somehow I can relate to some Swedish elements when it comes to your architecture. Yeah, I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to push this a little bit. Yeah, I, for me, regionalism has always been quite uh, interesting to develop and I'm still trying to, to dig into that source, to, but of course also to combine it with uh, international elements, in international style. And uh, I'm not blind what's happening outside Sweden, but at the same time I'm quite interesting, interested in to develop what our building heritage is all about. And Later on, I'm going to ask you some questions to our friends here. Uh, but maybe, if, if, I don't know the, the schedule, it. maybe you can do this later or... or can, I, can I ask it right, right now? I will. Uh, so, so, Bartek and Jan, I would like to ask you a question. Do you think what, what's, uh, that the regionalism has been enhanced now by the pandemic or would it have because i think it that is the that is that is the case in sweden anyway that i think now we are living in a time now when the architecture style is changing we are in a time now when the architecture is kind of eclectic and we will we and this is the this is the start, I think, of a new style, of a new way of doing architecture. Do you feel the same in your countries? I can start with Jan. Uh, yes, I like, as you say, it's changing. And I think it's, uh, you know, the, the regionalism or, or uh, uh, local offices becoming, uh, how to say, more relevant. But I don't think it's uh, it's connected with the COVID. I think this movement is, uh, uh, it was here a few years before. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's, it's becoming relevant that uh, um, the houses should be somehow, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, you should know where is it come from or uh, on what place is built. 
Yeah. I have to say, I, I, I agree with you because I think this this would have happened anyway, but it's, it's been accelerated now by the COVID, I think. Mm -hmm. Because we have we've been sitting at home and we have been have we've had time to think about it. And uh, Baltic, what 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 do you think? It wouldn't be so you know predictable according to architecture, but I can already see it in the different uh, part of life. For example, if we are going you know to spend a weekend or holidays, we used to go abroad and visit uh, neighborhood countries, and now we are more focused on the local because we are forced to do so. So if we want it or not, we are forced to, to, to get used to with, with what we have around us. So this is the first thing. And I think it's also posed a question in our heads. This is the first time when I went for a holidays, you know, uh, to the north of Poland, when I never seen, I was in visit half of Europe, but I didn't know the north part of Poland close to Lithuanian border. And this is because of the, you know, current restrictions. So to, to, to get to know the, the local architecture, those people, it was a very, very great uh, journey. But at the same time, I can say that because of the COVID, you know, we, the number of uh, uh, ask, uh, ask and maids from the clients, they want to build a, a single family house or a summer house, uh, really is much more bigger than, than before the COVID. So, so also people, uh, were forced to be close on the online uh, teaching and learning uh, during the COVID. So they tried to find the, their own small space with a piece of greenery and the single family house is, a, is the best alternative. I, wouldn't, I don't want too much discuss about the single family housing and its influence to the city. However, it is a, a, a big uh, difference what we have uh, before the COVID as an attention uh, towards the single family houses. Yeah. So maybe it is a start, what you said, yeah. of a new trend and uh, mode. Thank you. We'll come back to you later. <laughs> Let's direct the question to Sana also, um, because uh, I think it was a very interesting question, because uh, maybe our minds uh, have changed a little bit in many ways. Uh, aspects uh, in what we think is important and, and how we deal with uh, s some things. But I, I was thinking, you, you are working a lot with sustainability in your architect company. So is that something that you bring in as a, an important element? We have been quite good on uh, the say, sustainability question in Sweden, I would say, for a long time. Yeah, we, we work a lot with social sustainability, but also with the materials. And I, I think it's really, it's really important that we have more durable materials and that we that we really work with that and and in Sweden we have a long tradition with building in in wood of course uh, and I think or I hope uh, we can find new new ways of that uh, we're working a lot with cross laminated timber structures um, okay I try <laughs> uh, in Sweden we have a long tradition with uh, working with wood of course and uh, and in our office, we're working with um, uh, buildings with cross-laminated timber, uh, single-family houses, and, and also um, bigger bigger projects. And I think that is really a tradition to 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 work on, to con continue on. Uh, that we that that will explode here in Sweden, uh, just also also with the carbon dioxide footprint, of course, to minimize it. But we also have a timber tradition, which is really interesting. And I think that people are getting more and more uh, interested in, in, in like local traditions and using local materials, building themselves and so on. Maybe that's something we have in common a little bit, uh, the possibility to use, uh, use the forest. Um, that is so. But I was thinking, now, now we're here up in the Nordic countries, and of course there are lots of, of uh, collaborations in between Scandinavia and the Nordic countries, uh, and you have this fantastic collaboration. Uh, and I was thinking, if you look on a perspective uh, from outside your world, we're outside Central Europe now, but why are you an interesting region for creativity and architecture? So if, if you would do like a quick elevator pitch to, to somebody, why should they come and explore architecture in your country? And I would like to direct that question to Pavel first. 
what it what is the benefits of, of creativity where you are at the moment and then i think about the creative industries yes um, uh, it's a complicated question of course uh, uh, you're supposed to invite uh, lots of architects why should they come to your <laughs> part of the world <laughs> yeah maybe just just to know uh, our culture our architecture uh it's actually uh it's of advantage to to know foreign cultures because it's very inspiring uh it is a possible source of uh, creativity uh, uh, this this possibility to to compare the features of our culture with with uh, foreign cultures it's always fruitful this exchange and and I think this is one of one phenomenon very common for the for the countries of therefore before um, yeah it's useful mm. uh, yeah that's it yeah and Norbert what do you think why why should we uh, why should we come and uh, explore the creative industries in in your countries. Well, it's, it's a very hard question, and uh, it is. we are discussing <laughs> about this in Hungary as well. I mean, the architects talk about a lot about mm -hmm. that. What is, is there anything in the contemporary Hungarian architecture which is worth to come here and see and, and visit? And we are arguing about it, and there's, uh, it's, it's um, One thing is, is that and see is, is the culture, as Pavel said, that our roots is, is um, in our new building, our roots are so deep that, that you can see it. And if you are coming from, from distance, it, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. But for us, we are looking outside from Hungary and, and we try to mix what we can see somewhere else with our culture mm. and it's a kind of um, our heritage that like in the Carpathian bowl where we live you live very close to the austrian border austrian border mm. and 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 the, the this this v4 that uh, and and all the nations here so we are a kind of mixture here not ourselves as well Mm. Like, like I have, I have uh, roots from Slovakia, from Romania, from Austria as well. So our culture is a mixture as well. So that's mm. that's that's the, the main thing you you can you can see here and mm. what you should come for. Mm. But it's well, not always represent in our com contemporary architecture architecture doesn't represent all the time this no mm. but there there are... is important pardon me uh, i would like to add uh, it's uh, you know uh, the czechs the austrians hungarians and slovaks we have a centuries of common history actually yeah and that's quite important mm. uh, uh, yeah, as a, and... some mm. kind of cultural base uh, just done to evolve very individual but but we have in some sense a common base, mm. common ground. Yeah. yeah, and I was thinking even the Vis ground uh, is uh, turning 30 years this uh, year, but uh, it is a long history going back to a peace uh, peace uh, draft once in a while. So of course you have similar to uh, to what we have in the Nordic countries also. I would say. And Jan, do you have a, a quick answer on why 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 is uh, Central Europe a good location for creative industries? Uh, it's a hard question. Uh, I, I don't think that you're allowed to say skip if you want. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think there uh, there are very like specific uh, differences from the West. I think the biggest uh, difference is that uh, um, it's not good architecture is not uh, very supported by the state. You know, if you if you see the the private projects, um, th they are as good as anywhere. Else, but if you see uh, the the public projects, 
just a little bit of them are very good and uh, just uh, little of them are uh, made on uh, on uh, uh, architectural competition so it, it's getting better uh, it's slowly slowly getting better which is which is cool but uh, it's but otherwise i i don't think the the situation is somehow different from no from okay yeah. and Bartek, what is your point of view I know that you, you have a very fast growing economy in Poland and uh, you're also very good on the fashion and design field for interior design. I would agree with Jan that uh, in this part, the, the, the good architecture in, is not that common like in the Western uh, countries and it's because of our history and about past. So we, we were uh, behind the Iron Curtain and uh, now we are working on it to, 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 to change these differences. But it's also interesting, and it's also now the time when we, even uh, in, in Poland, started to discover the architects that were working during the communist time, but they were not in the mainstream. And we can already talk with, about it because still, you know, 20 years ago, it was, everything was bad, was, was what was during the communism time but it's not that that's true so this is the time we can recover it and maybe that's why we're all also uh, this is the time when we can be uh, interesting uh, for uh, another countries from from western europe mm. uh, still not uh, as developed in terms of architecture and with our interesting past mm. that's interesting i'm happy you, you mentioned uh, the 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 architecture from from uh, the Iron Curtain uh, era. Norbert, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just would like to add something to Bartek. Because yes. <clears throat> um, this, this gap... I think your connection is a bit bad. Can you repeat the question? I think your connection... Sorry about it. No, no problem. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so I would like to add something to, to Bartek's, uh, that this, um, this, this gap between Western architecture and Central European or uh, a Hungarian architecture is not always because of the architects. It's, it's mostly this, this past, this, this 30 or 40 years behind the curtain that, that our not the clients, but the, but the, the system the, itself. The, yes, mm. the society, okay. and mm. it's so deep inside of us that that we just it's very hard to change. And even mm. this this thirty years or or 20, more than twenty years, mm. it just wasn't enough to mm. change this. So it's Th thank you for sharing that. I think that's uh, interesting. I don't know. Do you want to comment that, Sana? Because we have uh, we have been. In an, we haven't had a war here since uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. And, and do you want to comment? Yeah. May, yeah. May, yeah, yeah. May I shortly just just to add? Um, it's quite interesting. It's uh, now time to uh, rethink a this legacy of the late uh, lay, uh, of the from 50s to 90s architecture uh, behind the uh, curtain and uh, uh, it's uh, we have a lot of examples of excellent examples of late modern architecture in our our countries and of course it's uh, of course it's a controversial topic uh, because of ideological connotations of course or uh, a lack of uh, methodology, how to deal with this kind of architecture. But for sure, the values of this architecture are being uh, rediscovered now. It's uh, some kind of renaissance of, of the values of, of this architecture. Yeah, absolutely. And But I think we have a, here and in your countries, we have a big challenge to take care of this heritage because it's, it's some, some, some buildings are really fantastic, but some are not, or some areas. Uh, so it's a, I think it's the most uh, interesting thing to work on today. How do we do, deal with this? And I mean, big, big areas that are really run down, 
And how do we do? Do we put another facade or do we just uh, put a little uh, something extra? Do we add something that uh, just makes it a little bit better? Or, or how, how do we do it? And uh, there are not so many good examples on, on, on dealing with that, I think. I mean, restoration is one thing, but I mean, this, uh, this more uh, adaptive building uh, way of, of, of renovating, that you just you add something or, or high, you level up or... No, no, not at all. I, I'm more into like, um, if you don't have a good out, you don't have a nice entrance to a building, the entrance is run down, maybe you just make the entrance nice and then the building is okay. Or do you do like Lacaton Vassal and you add another an, another facade? Or do you try to take away? Uh, I have a project where, where they, the municipality wants us to uh, change the facades completely to, to a kind of 20s facade instead from in a building from the 70s because they don't like that kind of architecture. And then it's really difficult. And you said yes to that commission? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thomas, do you want to share something? But I was thinking like the Barbican Centre in London, for instance, people used to hate it and now it's a beloved building. So I don't, we also have these kind of examples in Sweden. What's your opinion on this? Well, first of all, I'm going to answer the, the first question. Why do we, why do we, the, the elevator pitch for your countries is that we are curious uh, on your countries due to the fact that you all come from from very rich culture background and uh, much more rich culture back then than we are can pro provide with because you were older countries you were you were uh, very much developed during the time we were, we were still vikings and uh, so that's the reason why we are very curious about you because we know that what you are capable of you were in the front line, all of your countries, in the early modernistic times. And during, by obvious reasons, you have been kind of forgotten for like 40, 50 years. We didn't have that much contact with you. But now we know that you are, uh, you, are you, you have the possibility again to be leaders of something new that you were in the early modernistic times, because they, you were very strong then, as you know. And now we are waiting for your new, uh, the new times that you will be taking lead of together with the Nordic countries. So let's join forces together. That's beautiful. Thank you for those words. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I also really do that we get to meet uh, on a different level like this. And uh, this whole thing with the design diplomas, it, it is a way to connect with people. So we will, uh, I think, uh, keep our each other's mail addresses and everything. Here you go. Yeah, because we know everything about Holland, Switzerland, France, Italy, uh, Britain, and, um, and but we don't know that much about you. So that's why we are very curious. So we will all get invited, I think. Um, I'm a bit curious. Uh, should we move on to the more personal questions? And then I would like um, Sanna to pull a card for uh, Norbert, I think. Okay, Norbert, what have you practiced more than 10,000 hours? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have no idea. 10,000, I, I don't even know this, this 10,000 hours. I mean, it's, Ten, uh, it's, it's like, like working five years. Uh, five architecture, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and to Sana, I want to pop the question. Name a person who has deeply affected your career. Well, I guess my business partner, I think. She's my, um, 
what you say. Yeah, we talk about everything and about architecture every day. So absolutely. Do, do you want to add something about her because you're two uh, women leaders? Yeah, Oasa and I, we met at school for 25 years ago. And then we started our business directly after school. So we have like worked together every day for, well, for 25 years, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, Sana, please pull out a card for Pavel. What would you change in the city where you currently live? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> hard question. Uh, actually, uh, I would like to stay uh, without, without radical changes. Is some some smaller improvements, uh, not to lose the character of the places I like in Bratislava, and there are not always uh, nice places. There there are I like places. There are the result of uh, more influences. There are there is some kind of ambiguity. I like uh, this kind of places and. Uh, in this campaigning for a nice public spaces, they are getting lost. Uh, that's that's yeah. I would be very careful with with making nice those unfinished places. You you need the in between spaces. Yeah, that's that's mm, yeah. that's a good answer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I will pull out the next one for you, Sana. Tell us one mistake you've made and what you learned from it. Or don't, don't you, you pass, okay, then you get another one. What keeps you up at night? Um, TV series um, and sometimes work when I can design, yeah. Okay, so, and your turn to go with Norbert. Describe the aesthetics in your home country. Yeah. Uh, um, we didn't hear anything at all. Okay, so sorry. We take the next one. Which of your tasks would you happily let a robot do? Cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's not my task. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think doing the bills. <laughs> Okay, one more question to Sana. What do you consider the biggest challenge that human, uh, your mind can needs to solve? What is, what is our biggest problem? And you cannot answer pandemic. <laughs> well, I have to say the climate crisis and, and, and that what the building industry is doing there. Is a, it's a thing that we really can, can do something about. So that's my answer. And that is building more things out of the woods? Or wood material? Yeah, and also using what we have. Don't uh, tearing things down. Using using the buildings and the materials that we that we already have, uh, because it's not only the climate; it's also the nature resources that we're running out of. So it's a really crucial thing, and we can do a lot. Like renovating both furniture and houses. Okay, so one more for Pavel. Tell about one memorable memorable compliment you have received about your work. For you, Pavel. I, I, I have to think about it. Actually, there were some compliments. Mm. I will present it in my in my presentation. Uh, I have extended my country house. Uh, in a village uh, 100 kilometers to the north from Bratislava. And the, the village people came, uh, they, are, uh, they keep some distance to the, to the modern architecture and they are saying they like it somehow. They, they find it. Uh, they could imagine to live in this kind of architecture. That was maybe the, my uh, latest compliment I get, I have got, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah.
That's beautiful to hear. I also uh, do vacation living in an area where they always call me the, the person from Stockholm, so I'm not really a local. <laughs> Okay, Sanna, if you could co-work with anyone in the world, who would it be? Oh, that's that's also a hard question. Um, I guess uh, I guess I have to say some one of you then, but <laughs> but I, yeah, we move on. Pause, maybe Pavel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. I would like to try to co-work with my harshest critic. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> okay. If you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's, that's it's it. a classic, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I have one question for you, Sana. What has been your favorite project all times? Well, I must say it's a project that I'm doing now, and it's just uh, extending and uh, and. Um, an area with housing from the 60s that is really, really exciting. It's uh, and I'm looking forward to work with that for several years. Mm. It would be nice if you share it later with us, don't you think? I would love to see it. So, and then we have one final for you, Norbert. Are you prepared? Good. What makes you get out of bed in the morning? My wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we will uh, interact a bit with you, Thomas. I don't know if you need the cards really, do you? But uh, please go ahead. Um, pop one question for Jan or... Uh, yeah, you choose. Okay. See if the question is enough. Otherwise, I would like to ask you, Jan, what is your favorite dish? Uh, it's, uh, for, it's quite, uh, it's Vietnamese soup. It's quite popular now here. You know, we have a big Vietnamese community here and... Uh, uh, well, how come? Uh, it's, uh, it's based in the history that... Uh, you know, because we were a communist country, Vietnam was a communist country, so we had a big exchange of, uh, ah, of okay. workers That's, and yeah. uh, they made a big community here. And uh, now it's like last few years, it's uh, Vietnamese uh, cuisine is very popular here. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Thank you. My favorite dish is actually everything from Japan, anything. <laughs> But we don't have a Japanese community, but uh, I, I like it anyway. So, um, well, I can ask you the same question. Bartek, the same question to you. What's your favorite dish? <laughs> I'm very typical, but uh, every good pizza is really welcome. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, uh, this is a question. What, what are you currently working on, Jan? Now? Yes. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of uh, restorations like family houses and uh, city houses and uh, we, uh, we also work on our um, like family business which is a former ceramic factory which is transformed into uh, event place uh, with, uh, with, the, with the hall and with the, with the um, how to say, with the hotel. And mostly, mostly it's uh, restoration work. Like, um, I don't say we don't like to build uh, new houses, but mostly they are asking, um, like with the old ruined houses. Yeah, but if you see it from a sustainable way, uh, a house that, that it can be reused all the time is the best building. Never turn down. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I say. We have uh, too much houses and uh, too little people. We don't new build. Mostly, we don't new build new houses because you know the the the, the cities are uh, if you count people are shrinking, but their size is uh, is uh, getting bigger, which doesn't make any sense. It's not very sustainable. So, Bartek, I'm going to ask you another question here. Uh, give a piece of advice you wish someone had told you. Uh. For our 
work, it was a bit traditionalist. We had uh, uh, just a small uh, explanation. We had uh, every every year every year we had a few uh, people invited for a lecture by our association of architects, and it was a few years ago when we had a nice lecture from uh, Willem Neutelings from Neutelings Riedijk Architects from uh, Netherlands. And there was one nice question because they really make an avant-garde and modern architecture. And one of the students asked them, do you have any advice for us, our students? And he said, be traditionalist. And this is what I learned while working in the Netherlands, because we are, they, this is the country that is seen really as a modern country, but they are really traditionalist. And this continuation of the, uh, let's say, main themes in architecture are visible once you really get into it. So this is a really good advice that I keep in my heart. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, all, I'm also curious uh, about how big is your office, Bartek? We are uh, only a few people. It depends on the, you know, uh, projects, the number of projects. So sometimes we are growing, especially for the competitions. But now for this event of V4, we are collaborating because we with another office of our friends, Marlena, and we share the space. So there are always a bigger number of people and we can exchange in between us some stagiaires and uh, people. But we are still uh, quite uh, small as a company. Yes. Is that common or do you have a lot of big offices in your country? Yeah, there are a few big, uh, bigger offices. But uh, and what, what, is, what is a big office? It's big office is about, you know, 100 people, yeah. 100, 150. So they are mainly, uh, mainly positioned in Warsaw or had already separate branches in another cities. But there are only, I don't know, uh, 10, uh, 20 offices like this. And there are a lot of small companies that try to survive. Yeah, yeah. So that's okay. That's quite interesting. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm going to ask you one, but you, you can read it on your own. <laughs> What is your favorite material? Well, every material that is uh, that is pure. I, I of course, because we have a lot of wood in the, in this country. I do have fa that is of course a favorite material. But any material that is honest, so bricks, concrete, steel, all of them are kind of favorite materials in different ways. So, uh, but for me, it's important that the material is honest can you give an example of a dishonest material uh yes if you do something that pretends to be something else can be dishonest yes but at the same at, at the same time because this is also a tricky question because at the same time we have beautiful buildings in this country that are made out of wood but to pretend to be something else that are painted as stone houses. Uh, all, and all, uh, the, the old city in Stockholm is 95% wooden houses, but they have put plaster on them. But that is also our heritage. So in a way, the, the, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're trying to look more rich than we are. Uh, okay, so grab another card. Okay, Jan, what has inspired you recently? I'm mostly inspired by other houses. You know, um, just uh, going for a trip to the villages and making pictures of them. And I like uh, what, what I named accidental architecture. You know, if uh, the houses are changed during the time and mostly the architect is absent, and uh, sometimes it's really horrible, like most of the time it's really horrible, uh, but sometimes it brings uh, really a lot of inspiration because you find things which you could never um, think of for yourself. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to ask you, Bartek, if you want to go to for a study trip to see a new building, what building should that be? Ah, this is the question because recently I don't want to see too much new buildings. I rather uh, focus what was, you know, uh, 50 years ago. As this is a lot of things that I would love to, to visit. But if you ask about the modern one, I've never been to Switzerland yet. So 
that's I think the trip still uh, before me, so I would love to to, to visit Switzerland. It, it's a good choice. I would also love to travel soon. <laughs> um, Thomas, did you choose your profession or did it choose you? I've always wondered, actually. Yes, uh, this this is a. Uh, uh, the story behind why I became an architect was that I had two friends in Sweden. We had to do the military services, and I did it for many, many years actually. So I became an officer, and uh, I there of all places I met two guys that wanted to be architects, and they were nice. They were they were they were uh, doing watercolor paintings during the free times. I, so I I did it with them. And then we all three applied for architecture school, and I was the guy, the guy who was, you know, you know, I had no really own idea. I just was just copying them. And when we received the application application forms from the letter, uh, I was the only one that was accepted. So by coincidence, I became an architect. That's a nice story. Do you want to pull another card? Yes, for myself or. Okay. <laughs> well, now, John, do you prefer to walk alone or together? Work, not walk. <laughs> like sometimes it's it's good to work alone, alone, and to just yeah. Sometimes it's it's good to cooperate. Like if if it's a bigger project, it's necessary to cooperate, and I think it's it's good to cooperate. And if it's just small projects, some very personal projects, then it's completely okay to just uh, do it to your own. Yeah, I think many architects, as myself, we are kind of very social, but at the same time, we are lonely wolves. So we need both. So, Bartek, there's a question for you. How do you start your day? I mean, not waking up, I presume. <laughs> Yeah, waking up, uh, preparing some some breakfast. I need to take my daughter to uh, to school. Usually, that's my uh, obligation. And uh, then I go to the work. So it's just ordinary. Two times per week, I I have my students on the Fine Arts Academy in Katowice. I'm a professor there on the public uh, space design studio. So it makes a difference. But uh, the, the 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 mornings are usually similar. So when do you start at when when you start at at the office in the morning? I'm about eight nine, depending on the day. Okay, so it's same as. And you, Jan, ten, eleven, no. Jan, uh, when, so, do you, so, when do you when do you start in the in the morning, at the office? Yeah, usually around like I'm waking up around six seven, but at the office at eight. Okay, oh, early I'm starting with coffee. Okay. <laughs> and what time do you get into the office? Eight. Eight? Oh, wow, you're an early bird. Uh, I, I, I pulled the, my favorite question ever because these cards are set and they are used in many kind of meetings like this for artists, designers, and writers, and so on. But this is my favorite, Thomas. If we asked your first boss to describe you, what would she or he say? Uh... I had a, my first boss who has a great impression on me and he was, um, I think he would have said, ambitious. I, I think that's a perfect one. And uh, all the colleagues here are uh, starting to look at their watches, which means that we're going to round up. So I'm going to ask you just to answer <clears throat> all of you the next question. <clears throat> Sorry. All of you the next question. And uh, it is, which country will be your first business trip? So I'll start with you, Sana. Which country will be your first business trip when you're allowed to travel freely and uh, have the time to be inspired? Well, I don't know, but I guess I would like to go to Portugal because I've been longing to go there for a long time. So Portugal, it was not Poland, I'm sorry about that. Where, 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 you, where would you go, Bartek? <laughs> 
I would need to go Slovenia and I'm waiting for it because we are collaborating with uh, one of the office in Slovenia now. So uh, there's a high time to go there. So I really count on it. You, you might get an invitation now. Who knows? <laughs> no, I'm already vaccinated. So <laughs> and Jan, Jan where, where are you going when you can and you have the urge to see something? Definitely to Vienna because it's it's nearby and uh, Vienna is beautiful and full of uh, great new architecture. Uh, uh, but I'm looking forward for Naples, it's mm -hmm. my favorite city ever. So, okay. And Norbert, and Rosalie, where where are you going for the next trip that you really can enjoy, like a business trip, like the classic one? Well, we should. We would like to visit the B four countries first, as 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 an architect's point of view, because we always went there as as normal tourists because it was because before our architectural life. It's a good start, and you also now have some good connections. <laughs> Did you hear us? Yes, you wanted to visit the V four countries. Did you hear us? Your connection is a little bit slow, so um, I will ask you, Pavel, where would you like to go? Um, I would like to travel to the city of Milano. To where? To, to Milano. Milano. Yes. Milano. Yeah, I also miss Milano and the design week and everything. Yeah, that's so. And Thomas, Tokyo? Mm, well, business was, I need to go to Finland. But I would love to go to Italy. And also, so let's meet up in Milano. OK. <laughs> yeah. So what time do we meet? And do we meet at Barbasso, or where do you want to meet? <laughs> Thursday <laughs> yeah. during the side week, maybe. 8 o'clock or something. <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah? Bye. Yeah. OK. okay. Uh, I would like to thank you so much for your patience doing this uh, in this virtual way. I think it's always a lot harder, but I think we have connected. I'm really happy about that. And thank you for answering these diplomacy questions and sharing so much of your ideas and work and everything. And I would also like to say thank you for your presentations. We had some really beautiful presentations. So good luck with the exhibition. And the vir virtual exhibition starts at the 7th of June. So see you there again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.